Welcome back to Inside Tennessee. Two of the most powerful lawmakers in Nashville with us this morning. One is a retired pharmacist, the other a banker, the House Speaker and also the Lieutenant Governor along with our panelists. And we had to keep Don and Susan apart for this one. Uh, Don, we will uh, go to you for our line of questioning in this block. Well, William's got the luxury of going to the beach, and I'm still in downtown <laughs> Knoxville, so uh, we, we see how the, the Republicans are favored on this show. Um, gentlemen, first of all, uh, in, in all seriousness, I want to thank you. This has been a difficult time for all of us that work in the public sector, whether it be the court systems or the legislature or whatever, and having to find ways to do our jobs. But uh, that said, um, Speaker Sexton, I, I particularly took note of you saying that you know you really focused on being fiscally responsible and trying to do things that would, would help the economy and help our citizens. Yet, we put money into the rainy day fund and we passed legislation, for example, that uh, the six week rule on abortion, which is gonna, is clearly unconstitutional. I'm not opining my personal judgment. Uh, every, every statute like ours that's been passed has been struck down and cost that state money to defend. We failed to put money uh, into the teachers' raises and budgets, yet we're giving tax breaks to big companies in an effort to, quote, foster the economy. Isn't there a balance, ultimately, that just really wasn't met? It, it sounds like this was a straight, and I have a supermajority, but a straight Republican agenda with no accord towards teachers, towards constitutionality, towards things, ultimately, that will hurt us in the long run. When people talk about education, when talk about we talk about also being fiscally responsible. How do you reconcile those issues? Speaker Sexton, I'll start with you. Yeah, well, I mean, I think first, Tennessee is the number one ranked fiscal financial state in America, first of all. Second of all, we're one of the few states our size that have a AAA bond rating. Um, and I think when you look at our fiscal responsibility, I think in the last 10 years with the right leadership under Governor Haslam and uh, Lieutenant Governor McNally, now Governor Lee, um, our state is prepared to handle this crisis and a billion dollar budget shortfall without having to raise taxes. With, so I think it's the exact opposite. Or you serve the majority that, and we've actually prepared our state better than any of any has. When you look at policy, you know, you want to talk about pro-life, there's severability clause in there. And um, that's just the difference between Republicans and Democrats. Um, I think we honored what we said we we're going to do with the Hall's income tax. You know, some people want to say it's uh, a tax cut for big corporations. I don't think that's accurate. What that is is a, a tax cut for people who invest and save their entire life. And we are going to phase it out over a period of time. And this was the year that we phased it out. And then as Republicans, as conservatives, we feel like it's best to put money back into the people's um, wallets and, and purses and let them Except spend teachers. the money. And so instead of. Well, with the teachers, you know, what we did do is um, I, I appreciate you saying this was a, a conservative budget because then the Republican majorities didn't fund ESAs this year. Um, so that got taken out to twenty five million dollars. Um, the other problem, though, is, you know, state employees didn't get pay raises. We didn't give ourselves pay raises. Um, and so there was hard choices that had to be made and we had to make them, uh, you know. And so we're looking forward to going back. But the number one goal is to get our state in, in a in the posture uh, where we can survive this crisis. And I think what you'll see is other states have Nashville and what they're having to do through this, this pandemic, 34%. The state of Tennessee, you're not going to see that because I think what you've seen over the decades with the leadership is, is we're handling this crisis without having to raise taxes. Well, that's fine that we're not raising taxes, but we're doing it, unfortunately, on the backs of some people and doing it in a way that ultimately is going to cost us money with clearly litigation that will happen over the abortion legislation that passed. I, I'm just really puzzled that, and by the way, I don't know that our viewing audience will shed many tears over the fact that the legislature didn't get a raise despite the hard work everybody has to do. Uh, but it, it really just strikes me as that would not be a group, uh, that's a group that we need to support and we need to support better. I agree with the state workers. They should have gotten the raise. And I'm just trying to understand, this is a rainy day. This is a rainy few months. It might be a rainy year. Why do we not support those people with a modest raise that was expected? And Your I'll, take let on me, that, thank you. Governor. Yeah. Oh, okay.
if you're referring to the rainy day fund, that's one time money and we can't put it in into continuing expenses such as raises or benefits, uh, programs that continue on. Fair enough. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, I'm going to start with you and then Speaker Sexton, I'd like you to weigh in as well. What grade would you give Governor Bill Lee on his handling of the pandemic and the COVID-19 crisis so far and, and why? Well, you've mentioned I've been there over 40 years and I've never seen a year as bad as this year. Uh, you know, we had a uh, a lot of problems in 2001, 2002, uh, again in 08, 09. Uh, we had a rather slow recovery, but we did, uh, our economy did finally pick up. Uh, I'd, I'd give him a very high grade. I'd give him an A uh, for the way he's handled and, and dealt with these crises in a very professional manner. Mr. Speaker? Yeah, I would agree with Lieutenant Governor and A. I mean, I think when you look at Governor Lee, he's never had political experience, which is a good thing. Uh, so when you come in the office, he had that first year to do the budget, and this year has been plagued with tornadoes and flooding and a pandemic and everything else. So I, I think he, he's made the right decisions. You know, the good thing about Governor Lee um, is when he makes decisions, you know he's making it with his heart and, and he's making the decision that he thinks that is right and that he thinks that should happen, just like with the mass policy, allowing the locals to make that decision because at the end of the day, the way that he feels is the same way that I feel, and, I, and I'm sure the lieutenant governor does too, is um, why not let the cities make or the counties make that decision through their county mayors and, and if they need to require mass, then they should fit all the time. It should be that it should be up to the local entity, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for making that point. We're going to take another quick break. Susan will lead off with you in the next block.